Good evening and welcome to the Manila Times TV's newest show called Congress Diaries. This is where we analyze and scrutinize and explore the pros and cons of some of the more interesting and controversial bills in Congress today. I'm your host, Kim Bernardo Lokin. And tonight, we take a look at two pending bills in the Senate, and both have something to do with heinous crimes. The first bill that we will tackle tonight is a bill filed by Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri. He calls it an act recognizing hazing as a heinous crime. Under the proposed law, hazing, if it resulted to death, rape, sodomy, or mutilation, shall be considered a heinous crime. The issue of hazing has hit the headlines once again with the death of a 20-year-old Philippine, Philippine Military Academy, or PMA, cadet pled Darwin Dormitorio. The bill's author, uh, Senator Zubiri, had noted that even after the passage of the anti-hazing law, this brutal tradition of fraternities continues. And with me tonight to discuss the issues related to uh, this bill is Attorney Chris Garantiel. Good evening, Attorney Chris, and Good welcome. Thank you, Thank you for having me here. Okay, so we mentioned there's already an anti-hazing law in yes. effect. But it seems that, uh, what, this law is ineffective, or it still needs to be amended, or, in, in other words, it has not deterred uh, the issue of hazing. So, uh, your reaction? We have our present law, the, the effective law which governs hazing is the anti-hazing law of 2018. But that's not the first law that tackles hazing. The first was passed in 1995. This was... This was triggered by the case of Lenny Villa in the 90s. Now, the 1995 version of the anti-hazing law, uh, it already has the penalty of reclusion perpetua. If the hazing results to the death, to, to rape, uh, sodomy, or mutilation of right. uh, the neophyte. Now, you will recall in 2017, there is also another hazing incident, alleged hazing incident, where uh, a law student died. So, in reaction to that, uh, that incident, in 2018, a new hazing law was passed. Now, the difference between this new hazing law and the old one is that in the new hazing law, uh, the participants or the planners or the members or officers of the fraternity who were present at the hazing, not necessarily the person who inflicted the physical harm, mm -hmm. they are they can be punished with reclusion perpetual already. That was not present in the previous law. Right. But with regard to to, to resulting death, um, mutilation, rape, or sodomy, the punishment remains the same. It's still reclusion perpetua. Right. So to my mind. It, this the, the the recent version of the anti-hazing law would be in effect would be an effective deterrent because it provides for stiffer penalties. You think so? Because uh, when they first uh, envisioned this bill that yes. is now a law, yes. that was also the same goal, right? But uh, we've seen uh, again in the headlines now we've had the the pleb uh, oh, yes, dormitorio yes. and uh, prior to that uh, about two years ago we were discussing about another uh, controversial issue on this one where someone also that's, died. That's correct. Well, the, the when Congress or the, when the government uh, imposes stiffer penalties on certain crimes, it's not a one hundred percent assurance that that crime will never be committed. Sure. And if ever that crime is committed, it doesn't mean that the law is ineffective. For example, uh, as early as 1993, we have the, we have the heinous crime law where death penalty in the 90s were, was imposed on certain crimes like robbery with homicide, rape with homicide, murder, parasite, etc. Now, with these stiffer penalties, it doesn't mean that those crimes will never be committed. In fact, they're still being committed up to, this, uh, mm -hmm. to the present. And does that mean that it's not effective? It doesn't mean that way. So, same case with hazing, even if there are stiffer penalties and there's still some incidents of hazing being committed, it doesn't mean that the law is ineffective. Right, but I, I think the clamor uh, mm. for from the public mm. is that um, why is hazing still allowed at this time, right? Yes. So, you can, you know, it seems that we are unable to stop hazing 
uh, which uh, a lot of people um, think that you know this has been uh, of a different era and uh, we should not be seeing those uh, things happen today um, I think the, in, in, in the quest or uh, in order to eliminate casing the state or the government would be taking baby steps. So it's eliminating hazing cannot be done overnight. And the state... You think the schools uh, cannot, you know, play a more active role in this one? Yeah, because... the, yes, yes. Under the present law, they should because uh, in, in the event that the schools are involved in a hazing committed within their yes. premises, I think they are liable to be fined. Right. Something which is not included in the previous version of the anti-hazing law. Mm -hmm. So you mean uh, in this uh, proposed measure of uh, Senator Zubiri, uh, the difference is that there will be uh, bigger penalties ah. perhaps for the school, apart from the fact that he wants to enroll this in the list of the heinous crimes, correct? Yes, the, the, the bill that you were mentioning um, proposed by Senator Zubiri, yes. it's not amending the anti-hazing law. So it's a totally different law. It's basically, it proposes to include the anti-hazing, uh, uh, which results to death or rape or sodom or mutilation. Mm -hmm. He proposes to include that uh, as one of the heinous crimes yes. mentioned under Republic Act 7659. Yes. But 7659 passed in 1993, it basically imposed death penalties on those heinous crimes enumerated in that law. Mm -hmm. Senator Sibiri would want to include hazing there. Yes. The problem with that is 7659 is no longer effective in a sense that death penalty is no longer being implemented. It's sure. prohibited sometime in 2003. Yes. So you would ask, what then would the inclusion of the violation of the anti-hazing law serve if it's included as one of the heinous crimes? Yeah. One effect there is, you remember, we have a law which provides for good conduct time allowance. That's right, and it's also an equally it's controversial the, yes. law right. that we have today, right? right. The GCTA. Right. Yeah. Right. You will notice, or you will remember, under the GCTA law, uh, persons charged with heinous crimes, they are no longer entitled to the benefits of the GCTA. Which means, if anti-hazing law is included in the list of the heinous crimes. Any person charged with the violation of the anti-hazing law, if it results to death, rape, sodomy, mutilation, they would not be entitled to GCTA. So, well, what, so what's wrong with that, uh, attorney? I mean, you know, there's a person that was killed, yeah. or... Uh, well, in, on a personal level, I think it's, uh, it's a welcome development to include that yes. with, uh, to the list of the heinous crimes. Mm -hmm. it, I think Apart from the fact that the anti-hazing law of 2018 already provides for stiffer penalties, sure. uh, adding it further to the list of heinous crimes would be, I think, an um, effective deterrent for its commission, against its commission. Okay, um, because we are already talking about this, I understand that uh, you also had a previous oh, uh, uh, yes, uh, engagement yes, yes. in this one, yes. specifically because um, you, you are uh, the lawyer for one of those uh, that were involved uh, during the older one, the, the one in yes. 2017, uh, I'm representing the one of Horatio. Uh, I'm representing one of the accused in the case, yes. but the, the, my client, the, 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 the law applicable in this case would be the anti-hazing law in 1995. That was the old law yes. before? Yes. Ah, okay, so... So, uh, the, the complaint or the information was already filed against my client before, or, uh, before the 2018 version was enacted. I see. Okay, so uh, since you are actively involved in that particular case, uh, and now we see that uh, there is this new proposed measure yes. that uh, has been filed in the Senate mm -hmm. by Senator Zubiri. Yes. Um, what is your reaction on uh, this one? In particular, um, we were discussing a while ago mm -hmm. that you said that uh, there's no death penalty here. Yes, yes, right. So it's uh, the maximum um, punishment is reclusion perpetua, yes, right? Correct. But I think the goal of uh, Senator Subiri is just basically to uh, include this uh, as a uh, heinous crime. Correct. So, Correct. I mean, um, given that, do you think that uh, it is uh, appropriate? Well, 
I think so. If the hazing results to death, rape, sure. mutilation, so yes. etc. Because if you will notice, the original list, they include, they include crimes against property, but the, the penalty of repression perpetua to death are being is being imposed only if that crime results to death. So robbery with homicide, for yes. instance. Carnapping is included, but only if it results to homicide as well. Okay. So hazing, on the other hand, simple hazing, if it does not result to death, or etc., the other qualifying yes. circumstances as I mentioned earlier, if it does not result to those, should it be considered a seems. But if it does, it should be considered mm -hmm. a seems. Okay, I think uh, the status of uh, this bill right now is still pending in yes, Congress yes. anyway. So, I mean, uh, this is the period of, uh, I think, in the committee level. So, that means there's still time to try to hammer out, mm -hmm. um, you know, all those inputs uh, that could be relevant or probably help this bill, right? But what about the, the schools? Aren't they liable also uh, for this one? Because, I mean, it seems that it's lost in uh, the discussion on the liability of the schools that allow hazing to happen in the first place. Um, under the present, under the present version, there there is a fine imposable against this institution. And how much is the fine again? Uh, my memory serves me right. It's one million. One million. One million pesos. That's just the tuition fee of <laughs> one or two students. So that's very cheap. So. I mean, you know, you, you obviously you might have a different this is, opinion. This is apart from the criminal liability of the officers involved, so apart from the institution, because you can't, you can't, you can't put the institution behind bars. You could only imprison the individuals. So yes. apart from the fine of one million, the, the individuals or the officers responsible, they would also have criminal liabilities. That's true. So uh, it's not a case of uh, washing your hands of. Uh, the responsibility, <laughs> yes, yes. you know, legally, right? So, um, when you are uh, moving forward, mm -hmm. do you think there's really going to be a better solution uh, to this problem of hazing that we have right now? I mean, given the fact that what? Um, we had one again recently, right? Yes, yes. And uh, it has created again public out, uh, outrage, right? right. And uh, we don't see it uh, stopping anytime soon. Um, maybe not stopping, but it could be it could be deferred or to, to be lessened to a certain extent. And the, the, the bill being proposed by Senator Sabiri, although it does not add, the, the, I had the opportunity to to read the draft of the bill, the yes. bill itself. It does not yet provide the penalty of death for hazing, but it only includes it as one of the heinous crimes. So. Later on, if it's included, and if the death penalty is brought, uh, would be would become effective again. Mm -hmm. uh, I think automatically hazing will be included. So, I, uh, such being the case, if they would impose death on hazing, it results to death, etc., mm -hmm. and it being considered a heinous crime, it would not stop hazing right away. But I think, if over time, it would be lessened. I mean, let's hope so, but I think one factor that we also must consider, and this one cannot be legislated, uh -huh. is the culture. Um, oh, you know, yes, yes. I mean, look at that, you know, some of the so-called law fraternities that we have right now, mm -hmm. some of the alumni are very prominent, and uh, they're right now, um, some of them occupy leadership positions in the society, and they have not mentioned or, you know, uh, they have not... Uh, how, how do you how do I say this they have not said publicly that you know this should be stopped and all and you know I mean in the coffee circles um, mm -hmm. you would even hear some of them uh, being proud to relate what had happened to them during their time right so how, how do you how do you think um, this would play in uh, the you know solving the problem of hazing so, uh, 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 well, we can wait because the, the new law providing for stiffer penalties was only passed just last year. Yes. So, maybe, kunti kunti baka ma inform naman yung public, ma deter sila, na malaman nila na mas palatindi yung penalty ng bagong atas na to. Eh, lumabas yung kaso dun sa PMA, 
Ngayon siguro nila na-realize, ngayon pala ko na na-realize na mas matindi ang penalties na wakan ng bagong batas na So, maybe over time, baka naman yung kultura slowly mawala. Let's see. You know, uh, Attorney Chris, yes. uh, even si President Duterte, mm -hmm. in uh, one of his, um, I think, speeches or was it an interview mm -hmm. uh, after the signing, after signing of the uh, Anti-Hazing Act of 2018, mm -hmm. he feels that there is no way to really stop hazing. So in other words, parang mm -hmm. feeling niya we are quite helpless in stopping this uh, culture of hazing. Okay. So, what, what is your reaction to okay. this? Okay, yung sinabi ng Pangulo that there's no way that we can stop hazing. It's not actually, it doesn't mean that there's no hope. Uh, you think? Hazing is just but one of the crimes, you remember? Before, before hazing, we have different heinous crimes already. Robbery with homicide, we have blunder, we have treason, we have uh, murder, parasite we impose stiffer penalties on them. But they are still being committed. Just the same with hazing. So, uh, ang sinasabi ng Pangulo, kung we cannot stop hazing, it doesn't mean that we can't do anything about it. We can't stop hazing, but we could at least minimize. And the recent law, 2018 law, yes. plus siguro itong bill na pinopropose ni Senator Subir, ang layo niyan, hindi naman siguro mapatigil, pero ma-minimize. O oh, dahil dapat nga ang layunin niyan eh mapatigil well, completely, kung, hindi ba? Kung hindi siya achievable, yeah. kung hindi mo magagawa overnight, at least little steps mabawasan kung hindi man mapahinto ka. That's true. Tama, tama yun. At least tuloy-tuloy natin yes. ina-address yung right. issue. Right. Especially because, you know, while it continues to happen and mm -hmm. it's uh, been one death too many, di ba? So, uh, finally, uh, Attorney Chris, uh, in light of this new uh, proposed measure that is uh, now pending in, uh, in Congress, do you think that uh, the schools, especially the law schools, and then in this case, yung PMA, di ba? As a revered military institution, they should also play a very active role in stopping uh, these things mm -hmm. to happen again in the future. So, dapat ba ipatawag natin sila? Dapat ba maglagay tayo ng provision doon on the schools uh, and uh, even uh, for the Philippine Military Academy? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, pagdating sa schools, I think the, 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 recent, the recent law, they already placed mechanisms to check on those institutions. So, let's just wait and see how the work, uh, how the how the recent law will take effect on those institutions. Hindi nga yata nag-work in. Yeah, pero, yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Oh, okay. So, uh, this has been a very fruitful discussion. Uh, masyado lang maliit yung oras natin, Attorney Chris. So, maybe oh, we, we can uh, have more time in the future to discuss on this again in another episode. So, thank you very much, Attorney Chris Garantiel. Okay, so uh, that was our first uh, topic for uh, this evening's episode. We shall take a break. We'll be back again with another bill pending in Congress right after this. The new era of Philippine TV has arrived, and we are here to lead the way. Here to deliver unbiased news. Here to spark fearless conversations. Here to redefine intelligence. Here to spread hope. Here to get your adrenaline pumping. Here to give you an inside look. Here to pay tribute to legends. And here to let your genius shine. At the end of the day, we're not just here to inform. Not just here to entertain. We're here to uplift the Filipino spirit. The Manila Times TV. Aspirational. Inspirational. Good evening and welcome back to the second half of our episode for tonight on the Manila Times TV's newest show called Congress Diaries. I'm your host, Kim Bernardo Lokin. Earlier, uh, before uh, the break, we were discussing about um, one of the bills uh, pending in Congress. This time, we will tackle another one. Uh, and uh, tonight, 
we have uh, two prestigious guests who will be helping us uh, digest uh, what the bill will be all about and analyzing and scrutinizing it. So uh, let's start. Uh, to my uh, right, we have uh, Dean Amado Valdez and of course, Attorney Ferdito Pasho. So good evening, gentlemen, and uh, thank you for being with us. It's our pleasure. Okay. Thank you for uh, having us, uh, Ms. Kim. Of course. Congratulations uh, for this uh, kind of program. Yes, uh, this is our pilot episode. So now, what we want to do is, uh, sabi nila sa Tagalog, himayin yung mga bills na naka-pending naka sa Congress ngayon. So we will uh, now uh, go to this bill uh, prepared by the Committees on Justice and Human Rights. This is uh, Public Order and Dangerous Drugs and also the... Committee on Finance, and the authors of this bill uh, with uh, Senators Soto III, or uh, our, uh, what, uh, he's now the Senate President, yes, uh -oh, Senator Richard Gordon. Uh, of course, uh, Senator Subiri's bill was uh, talked about earlier in our previous episode, uh, I mean the earlier uh, episode, and Senator Ronald De La Rosa. It is called uh, the Separate Facility for heinous crimes inmates act it proposes the construction of a maximum penal institution and will be located in within a military area or an island separate from the mainland so in other words uh gusto na nila ng separate facility the, this bill uh and uh, gusto nila uh, equipped with the latest uh uh, CCTV, security system, 24-7 monitoring of uh, prisoners, and state-of-the-art maximum penal institution. At gusto pa rin ng batas na ito, one in Luzon, one in Visayas, and uh, one in Mindanao. Okay, so, pag-uusapan natin yan ngayon. So, maybe the first thing to start with is that do we really need this bill at this time? So, there are so many other priorities right now in Congress. But of course, this one, I'm not saying that this one is not a priority too, but the first question is, do we really need this at this time? And do we have the budget for it? So, maybe we should start with uh, you, uh, Dean Amado Valdez. Seniority. Uh, Seniority, uh, yeah. Uh, Alam mo, Kim, yung the test of uh, society is how you deal uh, with the people in the lowest rank. Okay. Uh, and uh, perhaps you can consider yung, yung mga nasa preso as uh, the litmus, litmus test of yes. how the society treats its people. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, a step in the right direction. Pero sinasabi mo nga, uh, do we have, uh, do we put priority on this? Uh, do we have the resources for it? Uh, and I think this is... Uh, a problem that we have to face mm -hmm. but uh, we have to be careful to make a balance uh, as far as perception of people is concerned yes baka naman uh, magiging uh, magiging maganda maganda buhay nung uh, those who have committed heinous crime uh, it has to be seen in the context of uh, of really putting them in a situation where they will no longer be a uh, menace to the society. Mm -hmm. Para chine-check mo sila eh. But not to give them the comfort uh, uh, of staying uh, in a place uh, uh, which will be uh, para mas... Uh, Parang nire-reward mo sila. Mas reward, <laughs> well, rewarding for them. Oh. Because uh, alam mo, nangyayari maski wherever they are, Criminal mind can always find some way, mga loophole si Kaga, to be able to uh, do the things that they want to do. You know, that's a good, uh, no, huh? that, that's a valid, valid point actually. Maraming magre-react dyan. So, Attorney Ferdi Tapasho, what do you uh, think of this uh, bill? Well, I think we needed those bills 10 years ago. Uh, kung nagkaroon ng ganyang panukala at yan ay uh, naubahan noong pa, mm -hmm. hindi sana mangyayari yung uh, na-expose a uh, few years ago, yung tinatawag na believe it drug trading. Uh -huh. Kasi grabe yun eh, you know. Uh, the untold story of that is uh, the, the way uh, that it happened was that I was representing a client in uh, believe it. 
-hmm. by the name of Noel Martinez. Okay. And uh, he gave me permission to say this. Nung dinalo ko siya sa Bilibid, mm -hmm. nagulat ako. Mm -hmm. Bagkat, well, for one, I did not have to go through the usual channel sa Dina. No? Yes. Someone met me there, uh, escorted me inside, put me on a golf cart, ha? Okay. On a golf cart, wow. and brought me to a three-story building inside Bilibid, ha? Okay. Bilibid or not niya, eh. Kailan to? Ano yung uh, year to? Uh, at, uh, at 2014. Wow. Yeah, before, uh, two years before at uh, the end of the uh, Aquino uh, as, uh, administration. So, nagunat ako, oh, yung building na yun, yung first uh, floor, may parang opisina. May mga filing cabinet. Yun yung, ano, yun yung uh, headquarters ng GI, Genvin Ilocano, na mm -hmm. isang grupo doon sa Bilibid. Yung second floor, may office ng head nila, which is uh, Mr. Martinez. At yung, uh, complete with, ano ha, O, private office, may conference room mm -hmm. for uh, uh, around uh, uh, 16 people. Mm -hmm. At yung third floor ay yung private quarters niya na parang condominium. Uh -huh. Ang uh, sabi ko sa kliyente ko, oh, wag po kayong magagalit, ano? pero how is this possible? Sabi niya, well, anything is possible here. Kasi nakita ko at magpunta, may, may beauty parlor, Pambira. may mini grocery, the works, parang oh. mini city. Eh. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Sabi niya, anything is possible here as long as uh, you're in the good graces of the uh, Secretary of Justice and you throw money uh, at, at, the, at, the, at, at the people concerned. Eh, paano kayo? How do you earn money? Sinasabi niya, well, may pwersa kami na uh, mag-pumasok uh, uh, sa drug trade. And these are all matters of public yes, record right, right, yes. uh, in Congress. Ano? Pambira. So, yun, ang, ang, ano dyan, ang, the point being is that if we do not segregate the heinous criminals, lalo na yung mga, yung mga drug traffickers, ano? mm -hmm. uh, yung mga uh, uh, criminal undertakings na maraming pera involved, ano? mm -hmm. mga uh, gambling lords, drug yes, lords, yes. they will continue to ply their nefarious mm -hmm. trade, even behind prison walls as already proven. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Dahil meron sila, in, they can buy influence, they can build their your, your so-called kubors na mas maganda pa sa mga condominiums eh. That's sa right. Makati, they can, they can bring in whatever they want, uh, liquor, mm -hmm. mga kontraman, mm -hmm. uh, mga TV, even women. Kasi yung uh, monitoring is really lax. Kasi they are with the general populace, nandun yung minimum, nandun yung medium uh, security, at yung maximum. Sama-sama na. Sama-sama. Yung mga uh, bawal, pwede mo nang padaan sa minimum, in tatawid lang ng compound, napakadali. Mm. So talaga dapat ni separate facility, pa Alcatraz na. Na uh, yun nga. Mahirap yes. pasukin, ano. At lagyan ng jammer para hindi makapag-phone uh, calls yung cell phones. That's right. Mm. No. Lagyan na natin sa historical context. Yes, yes, please. Oh, please. Oh, yes, na si, si Ferdy, who is a good friend of mine. Pero maganda yan, ano? But, but you said the keyword word monitoring. Mm. Yes. But uh, in historical con context, uh, I'm scared. England before, ang ginawa nila, they uh, sent their uh, the, the prisoners or convicts of Guinness crimes out straight, yeah. Uh, ang pinag-colony, ano? Oh, oh, that uh, history, yes. And more recently yes. sa atin naman, uh -oh. we created these uh, places sa Palawan. Sa Palawan mm. before, yes. Ang sabi dyan, a prison without uh, fence. Mm -hmm. Right. So these are uh, all uh, things that uh, Yung, uh, yung common thread niyan is you're able to isolate these people mm -hmm. and you're able to monitor. Mm -hmm. And I think these are the organizing principles of a prison. Eh. Mm -hmm. uh, maski meron itong mga ginagawa nila ito, but if they lost track of the, the side of monitoring, yes. isolation, mm -hmm. baka it will be a repeat of all these things that are happening. On a grander scale pa. On a grander scale. Oh, dahil state of the art yung balak nilang gawin. Kasi you're putting them in an isolated place. Pero even those who are guarding them will be isolated from them. So there will be more freedom within. That's kingdom right. Kingdom within the kingdom. Yung nakakatawag dyan. They will be creating a kingdom within kingdom. Which yes. will be harder to police, for example. That's true. But uh, you know, sirs, uh, I think Ang iba, the question will be, eh, masyado na nga congested yung jails natin yeah, at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah. So, bakit hindi natin muna 
uh, i-modernize yun, okay. ayusin yung ating uh, penal colony system. Uh, but hindi natin dagdagan yung mga jails na yan at medyo gawing more humane. Yeah, so, the... Summarize what you have been saying. Oh. At sinasabi din yung uh, Monitoring, isolation, decongestion. Siguro kung dagdag pa tayo tayo, then we have a good feel. We have to do that. But that would also be part of uh, the first phase of the condition. Kung yes, ihiwalay mo oh. dun sa jails natin, oh. yung uh, mga victims of heinous crime, luluwag naman yung medium and minimum. So, uh, number five, classification. Oh, classification. Ayan. Oh. So, nakakalimang na tayo. Oh, because, Which uh, the, the lawmakers may be able to pick up from this program. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, maganda, maganda po lahat yung mga points na yun, sir. No? But, uh, in theory, maganda siyang pakinggan. But, uh, in practice, nakikita natin, it this, uh, you know, this does not happen. I want to cite you the practice. Yes, yes, Dean. There is some culture sa jail. Mm -hmm. oh. Ano nung Dean ako? Mm -hmm. And then I was director of the National League of Jail. We have the congestion of jail program. Mm -hmm. Punta kami sa mga jail. Sa loob ah, jail. Ah, I see. Oh. Oh. This was a program of your school? Oh, sa... oh, of the IBP. IBP, okay. But uh, as Dean, minumobilize mm -hmm. ko yung mga, mga Louis students Jansen, from, oh. all over the, uh, from all over the Universities. Oh, oh, oh. Different. We support your father. Mm -hmm. The prison warden is not really the power inside. Meron silang tinatawag ng mayor. Mga mayor. That's right. Yung mga mayor. Pagpasok mayor. sa loob, the one who has authority, yung mga mayor. Sa ano ba yan? Misa, misa. Ito ano mo siya na? The bigger you are in terms of what you have committed, mm -hmm. the more state you're uh, accorded to you as the mayor. Takot sila sa iyo eh. Dahil ito, pero ito, uh, nagdi-decapitate ito, pinitsyeno. Mm -hmm. At saka po, na, yung grupo-grupo pa yun ang mayor, ha? May mga zona pa yan. Yung may ito, may mayor na ito. Huwag kang magkatransgress dito. Ang okay, gulo yan. They have to look into the subculture to be able to come up with a good jail system. That's true. But uh, meron pa pong isa kasi in light of uh, what uh, Attorney Ferdy had uh, disclosed, no? Yung mga drug lords, eh ito yung main problem ni uh, President Duterte. Our problem. Our, 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 our problem. problem. But yes, that's right. And uh, how do you now um, deal with this kind of situation where they now have almost absolute power inside because they have a different set of rules inside you the know. facility right now. Eh ngayon, kung magtatayo pa tayo ng ganito, hindi ba ang nire-reward mo eh, mas delikado ang mangyayari? Parang, parang, parang oo oh, eh. Delikado na yung merong, merong, uh, merong isang, uh, yung isang kubol, isang province yun. That's yung right. Yung isang kubol, oh. province, yung isang kubol, na so, yung kanya-kanya may governor doon. Right. right. So how can we prevent completely these things from happening now uh, hopefully uh, pwede nating ipasok dito sa proposed measures na ito so well, what we is yes. yes. no? mm -hmm. uh, may upside no? parang alcatraz yan so you sabi. can restrict the people who have access to the island kasi mm -hmm. natural barrier yung tubig diyan uh -huh. mm -hmm. pag walang lagyan ng regular tubes ng uh, barko yan eh, o bangka Mm -hmm. ma malilimit mo na kung sino pwedeng pumunta. Mm -hmm. Number two, makoconcentrate mo yung monitoring doon sa specific type ng inmates which are uh, those who are convicted of heinous crimes. Ano? Mm -hmm. Which is not really a big part of the prison population. Malit na. Na fraction lang yan eh. Mm -hmm. ha? I -i Ilan lang yan doon sa, ano, sa tens of thousands of prisoners. Konti lang yan. Plus, I think the key job is number one, para mawala yung familiarity, yes. kaya yung regular na uh, rotation ng personnel, which you can That's do right. very uh, uh, easily do. Kung yun ay isla, kasi nagmadali mo mabilang eh. Hindi mo kaka infiltrate yun eh. Hindi yung katulad yun sa believing yun eh. Parang um, ano yung uh, isla yung recommend mo pero well, kahalat tayo na ayon din na kasi ayon Philippines eh, di ba? Kasi yung mga isla Kasi yes. ang ibubukot mo, yung heinous crimes, ilang libo lang yan eh. At saka convicted na. Mm -hmm. Yung, yung uh, final, right. ano, final uh, there, judgment oh. na, yes. serving time na. Kasi serving time, yes. Time na, yes. Serving time, yes. Ang nangyayari, diba, tra, alam naman natin din sa trial lawyers, uh, pagka uh, artist yan, ba, heinous crime, uh -huh. pagka may conviction na yan from the uh, trial court, kahit uh, yan ay uh, uh, under appeal pa, nililipat na sa buntin lupa from the city jails. That's right. Uh -huh. So, pagka ganun, siguro, pwede hindi na muna kasi may, may pag-asa pa naman niya na ma-overturn yung conviction on appeal. Pero once the, the conviction is final, saka ibiyahe dun sa isla kasi 
Ano na, final na yun eh. They will be then serving sentence. And here, they can na rin yun kasi. Yes. 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 But you know what? Uh, that all sounds really good. Meron ba tayong budget for that? Well, we have to. Kasi, <laughs> din, look at that. Ha? The funding for uh, this building and the facilities that are envisioned shall be taken from the appropriations of the Department of Justice. Okay, merong... eh, right here, right now, sir, palaging kulang yung budget natin eh, for the... isang idea, no? It's mm. crazy or it's ahead of its time. Yes. private Yung jail system. Privatizing the jail system? Yes. Um, yeah, if we result natin yan, pero oh, oh. they could Maganda set up yun. a place sila na ang uh, uh, mag-set up ng security, mm. etc. Et but siyempre yung, yung monitoring, yung loyalty ng yung private uh, because it will be business. Uh, the same time, will that uh, be susceptible to uh, more corruption, just in case. Or, Pero maganda yan doon. But it's a good yeah. idea. Uh, Nag-iisip din lang sila. Oh. Have to pursue all these things. Maganda yan din kasi yung accountability noon. Oh. Mahirap kasi kung government employee yun, hindi ba basta ma-fire yun, right. etc. Mm. Kung private yan, isa lang yung accountable oh. yan eh. Yung, Tama. Yung, ano, yung may-ari ng private penal colony, pagpalpak yan, the government is say, hindi kita babayaran eh. Palpak yung ginagawa mo dyan eh. Right. Pag naging ipin po yung accountability. Sa palawag for example, privatize mo yun. They could use the idle land to for productive purposes. Kung mm. dadalo pa siya ng uh, capital to, mm. magiging engine pa for growth yung lugar na yun. At the same time, na-rehabilitate yung mga. Parang self-liquidating. Oh, that's, that's a good that's a good idea. I think there's certain things that we have to you submit to these people. That's that, true. Uh, because that 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 that, uh, that idea alone is not even found in any, I think, oh, of the yeah, OOE. Oh, yeah. It's not here in the proposed measure, di ba? But in the very oh. deep uh, and deep uh, proposal. <laughs> Oo oh, nga, pwede natin uh, ilapit sa kanila. Ang mga consultants ito ba ito? But, but din, then, uh, the question now will be, uh, that they will be asking is that, this could probably potentially happen and uh, be good in a first world country. Eh kung third world country, di may bago kang mayor, you're creating the new mayor, yung mga na, kung pre-nivitize mo siya, kung sino yung kumpanya na ma-award na ganun, eh di sila naman yung may potential. We could ride on, uh, on modern, uh, ano yung mga satellites, etc. Yes. Monitoring. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't have to be first world country to be able to afford that. Well, di ba naman, you think so? Going accessible to the public, oh. yung mga public areas nung ano eh, nung uh, kakahit ako. Lahat ko na ito sa website, tignan ko kung may mga special, mga kubul-kubul na nag-uumpisa roon, para i-report mo agad. Full transparency, I believe, is the... You mean thing. yung CCTV, ano, can mm -hmm. be accessed uh, by uh -huh. the public? Pwede mong ganon, ganon ba? Yes, oo naman, oo. Kahit yung mga, huwag naman yung siyempre yung mga, may mga areas na private, pero yung mga, yung courtyard, yung mga corridors, pwede mo i-access sa public yun. At saka, at saka, ito, you cannot corrupt this. Artificial intelligence. Yo, ah, yo, 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 Wala, hindi po tayo blessed ng oras dahil uh, we have uh, limited time. So, we, I will also uh, ask that we'll have a part two of this next okay. time. So, in wrapping up, um, gentlemen, uh, we look at the bill uh, pending in Congress once again. Number one, is it really the right time to do this now? Uh, do we or should we... Uh, look at other more priority measures that are now pending in Congress, given the fact that we are now on the last, what, two, two, two year stretch uh, before the end of the administration. So, uh, your take on this, your last word on this, uh, would you want to start, Dean? Yeah, I think the journey of 1,000 miles uh, begins with a single with step. This, uh, okay, which means uh, now is the right time to do the it. Right time. Okay. Okay. Second, long over uh -huh. And, uh, you know, at the... Uh, while there is a question, of course, alam niyo may mga intangibles dyan. One of the intangibles for us 
is that, eh kung ikaw ay nasa kulungan, at parang ikaw naman ay hindi nasa kulungan, sapagat tinatabasa mo naman yung lahat ng uh, nararanasan ng hindi nakakulong, oh, eh, it undermines the faith of the people in the penal system. So dapat yan talaga, eh, para ganyan, para makita nila, eh, if you commit a heinous crime, which will uh, put you behind bars for life, eh, you will have to suffer that time. Kahit hindi ba nagbakasyon na lang sa country? O oh, yun, yun nga eh. Kasi they were saying, uh, Attorney Ferdy, na mas pangit pa nga yung condition sa mga taong ito bago sila nakulong. Nung nakulong sila, mas maganda pa yung conditions, living conditions nila. Hindi, yung mga diba? drug lords, hindi. Uh, there's mga no, uh, yeah, there's <laughs> price for freedom. Mm, of course, yun ba? Okay, so uh, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. With that, we would like to thank our guests once again, uh, Dean Amado Valdez and Attorney Ferdinand Topacio. And uh, this has been our premiere episode of Congress Diaries. We'll see you again next week, same time. I'm your host, Kim Bernardo Lokin. <laughs>